Hi guys, Wheelie here. Merry Christmas. I've made lots and lots of itty bitty Christmas stockings this year. I've been on a stocking making blitz, as you can see. But today's stocking is going to be hung up for Santa, so it should fit all of the prezzies that he will hopefully be bringing. You can probably guess from the colours that my stocking is for a little girl. She loves all things pink and sparkly, so I don't have the usual Christmas colours vibe of red and green going with this one. I usually work with DK yarn, but I wanted this stocking to be a bit sturdier and I also wanted it to be really colourful. So this pattern uses two pieces of DK yarn held together and used like one piece of yarn. I love the mix of colours this gives. It also works up much more quickly than just a normal piece of DK yarn, which is an added bonus. I've used this technique with some of my smaller stocking patterns using red and green held together and it looks really nice like that too. So you don't need to have a pastel colour. You also don't need to be using a fancy multicoloured yarn. The other thing I've done with this pattern is give you two options for how you work the top of the stocking. You can either go for a very simple single crochet top with a nice loop to hang the stocking from. And if you have a bit more time or you like the look, you can make a fold down ribbed top. You could even go the extra mile and add some applique hearts. I thought the stocking looked a little bare when I finished it and all the normal Christmas embellishments didn't really go with a pink theme. So that's why I went for hearts. I have got a video for the heart applique if you're interested in having a look at it. To make the stocking, you'll need between two and four colors of yarn. You'll need a color or two colors to be color one, the body of the stocking. And again, you'll need one or two colors to be color two, the trim. The darker multicolored yarn and the solid color pink are my color one. And I'll use two strands of the paler multicolored for color two. I did quite a bit of experimenting to figure out which hook worked for me. I went all the way up to an eight millimeter and worked my way down. For me, a five and a half millimeter hook is perfect. However, you might find that your crochet style needs a larger hook. The hook size will affect the size of the stocking, but go for the hook that works for you. You'll also need the usual extras, a pair of scissors and a needle to sew in the ends. Start with the two strands of yarn that we're calling colour one. Line up the tails. When you work with two strands of yarn like this, don't worry if they twirl around each other a bit. You don't need to keep them perfectly straight. That adds to the lovely random effect. You have a choice for how you begin the stocking. You can either make a magic circle, which I'm doing at the moment. I've put a link to my magic circle video on the screen, but unless you're fairly confident, I don't think this is the pattern to start learning magic circles on. Holding two strands of yarn together while learning a magic circle could just result in a really unmagical knot. So in just a moment, I'll show you your other option for starting. My magic circle is ready. I'll just tighten it up a little because I find it easier to work into the circle when it's smaller. The stocking is made with half double crochet. So get ready for round one by chaining one to get up to height. And if you're using a magic circle, you can jump forward about a minute while I demonstrate the other method you can use to start the stocking. Not mad on magic circles? No problem. Pop a slip knot on your hook. And instead, start by chaining four. When you've got your little chain of four, slip stitch to the first chain, which is the one with the knot at the end. You only need to catch one loop of it, but do make sure you catch one piece of each type of yarn. Yarn over and pull through the chain and then pull through the loop on your hook to slip stitch. And what you've made is a little circle. Make sure you can find the center of that circle and you can work your round one stitches into it. You're going to start by chaining one and then you're up and level with all of us with the magic circle. Round one is 10 half double crochets in our circle. Yarn over, insert your hook into the circle. Make sure you have four strands of yarn on your hook from the circle. That's two for the circle and two for its tail and two loops on your hook for the half double crochet. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are now three loops on my hook. There are two strands of yarn in each of those loops, but there are only three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's the first half double crochet. You need nine more half double crochets in the circle for round one. Make sure you work all of them over the tail. Even if you're working into a circle made from a chain four slip stitch together, it's a good idea to work your stitches over the tail. You'll need to sew the circle closed with your tail when you finish the stocking. 
working your stitches over it now will make that process a little easier. Pause the video now and unpause when you've worked 10 half double crochets. When you have your 10 half double crochets, pull on the tail of the magic circle to close it up a little bit. You don't need to close it entirely, you just need to bring the ends close enough together that you'll be able to slip stitch to this first half double crochet. If you have trouble recognizing your stitches, you can count backwards from the last stitch. Don't count this loop that was on the hook, count these V shapes and count back 10. So this is one, two, three, four, etc. And the V that is number 10 will be your first stitch. The first stitch does often look a little funny, maybe a little pulled down or to the side. So if you're not confident you're slip stitching to the right thing, counting back can reassure you. Make sure you get your hook properly under the stitch. See, I've got two strands of yarn in that V. Yarn over and pull through the stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. Tighten up the circle completely. When you make a multi-strand magic circle, sometimes it doesn't close up properly until you actually sew it closed, but get it as closed as you can at this stage and remember to sew it closed at the end. And if you're working into a chain four circle, you don't need to do anything to your circle at this point. You won't close your circle up until you finish the stocking. Round two, chain one to get up to height. We're still working in half double crochet. We're going to place the first half double crochet just here immediately to the left of our chain one in that first stitch space, the stitch that's split in half by the slip stitch join from the round below. And then work your second half double crochet into exactly the same spot. We're going to do that the whole way around the circle. We're going to place two half double crochets in the top of each stitch from round one. So at the end of this round, you'll have 20 stitches. Pause the video here and unpause when you have 20 stitches. I have 20 stitches. Do you see that gap? I haven't missed a stitch. That's the top of the slip stitch that we finished round one with. When you work in the round, which we're doing, you traditionally work into the first stitch space, but not into the top of the slip stitch. If you were to accidentally work into both the first space and here, you would increase your stitch count each round without meaning to, and your circle would get a bit wonky. Basically, you need to remember that you can't work into this spot if you've worked into the first spot. So because we worked our first two stitches into the first space, we're leaving this spot empty for round two. But if you counted your stitches and you have 20 stitches, hopefully you won't be tempted to add in any extras. To finish round two, slip stitch to your first half double crochet, which is this one that looks a bit bent over. If you have trouble finding it, you can count to 20 back from your last stitch to find the first one. Once you've slip stitched, it's time for round three, another round of half double crochet. Chain one to get up to height. In round three, you're not going to work your first stitch in this first spot here. Skip this one and put your first half double crochet in the second space along. By slightly changing where you place the first stitch every second round, you'll keep your seam a bit straighter than it would otherwise be. We're still making our circle bigger, so put a second half double crochet in next to your first one of the round. This next stitch just gets one half double crochet. The next one along will get two half double crochets, then one half double crochet, then two half double crochets, and so on. That's the pattern you'll repeat around the circle. This round will increase the stitch count to 30. However, we're going to place the last stitch in a slightly different spot. So pause the video here and unpause when you have 29 stitches. If you're on track with the pattern, your 28th and 29th stitches will be worked together in one space. At the moment I have 29 stitches and round three needs 30 stitches. You have a choice about where you place your final stitch. You can work it into the top of the slip stitch from the round below. You can easily slip your hook under two loops of that V and work a half double crochet as normal. The other option is to work into this first space here that we skipped at the start of the round. I don't think there's much difference between these two options. It's just about what you prefer the look of and what you're more comfortable with. To work in the first space, yarn over, insert your hook into that first spot, just poke it in there and catch two loops, ignore the chain one, and work a normal half double crochet.
you will have to wriggle the stitch around sometimes to get it to sit properly. Wherever you placed that last stitch, you have now finished round three. So slip your hook under the top of the first half double crochet and slip stitch. From here until the end of round 13, we'll be following the same pattern. To start round four and every even round, chain one to get up to height. We skipped the first space in round three. So for round four and every even round, work your first half double crochet into the first space and keep half double crocheting around the circle, one in each stitch from the round below. Pause the video here and unpause when you have 30 stitches so we can finish the round together and I can show you the pattern for round five and all the odd numbered rounds between here and where we start to create the heel in round 14. At the end of round four and all your even numbered rounds, when you have 30 stitches, you don't work into that slip stitch. You don't try and get a stitch in here. You're all done. Just slip stitch to the first half double crochet to finish the round. And before you start round five, this is a good time to flip it, pop your work out. We've got a little bowl now and the tail of the circle is inside the bowl. For round five and all of the odd rounds, chain one, skip that first space and work into the next one along. Put one half double crochet into each stitch around the circle until you get to the end of the round. If you pause the video here and unpause when you've worked 29 of your 30 stitches for this round, I'll meet you in a moment to show you again how to place the final stitch for the odd numbered rounds. It's time to place the 30th stitch for round five. I know I showed you this already in round three. The main thing I have to say is that I'd like you to stick with the method you used at round three. It can look a little funny if you switch and change within the same project. I'm going to put my 30th stitch in the first stitch like I did last time. If you put your final stitch in the top of the slip stitch last time, you do that. Slip stitch to finish round five. And then please pause the video again and work round six to 13. I'll put the pattern instructions up on the screen for you. Turn the video on again when you've worked the slip stitch to finish round 13 and I'll meet you there to start creating a heel for this stocking. I've finished round 13. I've got a decent length here so we can start round 14. This is where things get interesting. Remember the pattern is written on the screen too. If you have trouble following along with the video that might be a help. Chain one. Skip the first stitch and work a single crochet in the next stitch along. Insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops. That's a single crochet. Single crochet in the next stitch too. And in the next two stitches, work one half double crochet in each. The next four stitches each gets a pair of half double crochets. So two half double crochets in each of the next four stitches. See there's two stitches in that one stitch. We'll do that again. When you have your four pairs of half double crochets, we're going to work one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches, just lonely half double crochets, not pairs. And in the next two stitches, you'll work one single crochet in each. Skip the next stitch entirely 
and slip stitch into the one after it. That's the end of round 14. To start round 15, chain one and turn your work. We're going to skip the first stitch and work a single crochet in the second. If you find it easier than skipping a stitch, you can look at your work from above. Don't count the loop that's on your hook. Count these V's. This is one, two, and work your single crochet into the third. Single crochet again into the next stitch. And the next 11 stitches get half double crochets. After those 11 half double crochets, you're going to work a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And then we're going to slip stitch, but we're going to skip this stitch and we're going to skip the chain one and slip stitch down here. So I'm going to give you a good look at this from the top because it is a little confusing. If you count backwards the V's, it's one, two, and three. You're actually counting the top of a stitch, a chain one that got you up to height, and then down to a stitch in level 13. Now we'll start round 16. Chain one and turn. We're going to start with a single crochet, but we're going to skip this first space. If you'd prefer, you can count back to the stitch we're working to. Count one, two, and work a single crochet into the third. In the next five stitches, work half double crochets. When you have your five half double crochets, in the next two stitches, you're going to work pairs of half double crochets. So two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. And then you'll work one half double crochet in each of the next five stitches. That finishes round 16. We can start round 17. Chain one and turn your work over. We'll start by skipping a stitch. If you count back from the hook, looking at it from above, you count one, two, and work your first single crochet into the third V. After that single crochet, in the next 13 stitches, you're going to work half double crochets. When you've worked your 13 half double crochets, in the next stitch you'll work a single crochet. Then we're going to skip the next stitch and skip this whole area entirely and slip stitch right here into round 13, into the slip stitch join. That finishes off round 17. We're about to start the last round of the heel. So one more round where we mix up the stitches, then we're back to the easy pattern from earlier. Chain one 
and turn your work to start round 18. We're going to skip the first stitch and work a single crochet into the second. Skip this one, work a single crochet here. If you prefer, you can count back V's from your hook and work your first single crochet into the third V from the hook. We're now going to put one half double crochet in each of the next 13 stitches. When you've worked your 13 half double crochets, you'll have reached this section. You've got one stitch left and this side area. We're going to work a single crochet decrease. We'll start it in this stitch here and we'll finish it down here in round 13. So insert your hook into the stitch under two loops, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now skip over this whole area and insert your hook down in round 13. Yarn over and pull up another loop. There are three loops on your hook and can you see that the stitch is attached to a few different spots? Yarn over and pull through all three loops to finish the single crochet decrease, which is a single crochet spread out over two points in your work. And by working that stitch, you filled in a gap that would otherwise appear in your stocking. That is the first and last tricky stitch of the stocking. We're going back to working in half double crochets for the rest of the body of the stocking. So pause the video here and work 15 half double crochets one in each stitch, which should take you back to the beginning of the round. The 15th half double crochet goes into the last available space, just here. To finish round 18, find the top of your first single crochet of the round, slip your hook in there, and slip stitch. Brilliant, that has finished the heel. Let's have a look. It should be starting to look like you have a foot shape there. We're back to the easy part now. We're going to add some length to it and we're back to repeating the odd and even round from the foot section. We're up to round 19, an odd round, and we'll follow the odd round pattern. I'll leave you to pause the video here and alternate between the odd and even round patterns. I'll put the pattern up on the screen for you again, and you can turn the video back on when you've slip stitched to finish round 32. I'll meet you there to show you how you can judge whether your stocking is long enough. After 32 rounds, my stocking is the length I want it to be. It's easy to check how you're going with the length. Fold your stocking at the heel, and if the toe is just slightly shorter than the body, that's where I tend to stop. I think it's long enough, and I move on to adding the top. So my son was watching me when I folded the stocking to see if it was the right length, and he asked if he could demonstrate for you how to check if your stocking is the right size. So I filmed this. Oi! Oi! <laughs> that was you get your foot out of there, you runner. <laughs> so I don't know that that will help you figure out how long your stocking needs to be, but it probably is a good indication of why you need to weave the tails in really well on the magic circle at the toe. I've slip stitched to finish round 32, and that's the body of the stocking finished. It's time to bring in colour two. With stockings, I like to change to my new yarn after the slip stitch. There are lots of ways to bring in new yarn, so if you have a method you're comfortable with, please use that. I'll show you the way I use for this pattern. So I have the two strands of yarn I'm using for color two. I've got two strands of the same yarn, a very pale variegated with a little silvery strip running through it. I was going to have one strand of this and one strand of white, but this has been in my stash for ages and I've never used it, so I figured why not go all out and use it up. To bring in the yarn, I fold it and that creates a little loop. I grab that loop and pull it through the working loop. 
Now I need to tighten up the bit of color one that you can see here. I do that by pulling on the color one yarn. And can you see that that's pulling it a bit more out of sight? The next thing I'll do is secure it so that it stays pulled out of the way and make sure your hook stays in for this part. Cut the old yarn, the color one, and tie the two tails together. Just use two simple knots. So from here, whichever option you choose for putting the top on your stocking, you'll start by changing your yarn. I'm going to show you the simpler option first, the single crochet top. Then when that's done, I'll show you option two, starting from after this color change. When those knots are tied, tuck the tails away inside the stocking. I'll weave those in properly later, or this stocking won't stand up to the heavy treatment it will be getting. And I'll start option one, the single crochet top with a hanging loop. We'll be working in single crochet and I'm not going to chain one to get up to height because that little bit of height from the yarn change will do the trick. We'll start by working eight single crochets in the next eight stitches. Pop your hook into that first space, yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through both loops and work another seven of those. Eight single crochets should get you to the halfway point. You can add another stitch or remove one if you're not lined up with the fold. Then we'll start to add the hanging loop by making a chain. I'm going to chain 30. I want a decent length loop as stockings often hang from bed posts so they need quite a long loop, but you can chain whatever length you prefer for yours, odd number or even number, any number is fine. I ended up making a nice long chain of 30, which should be enough for this to hang on the bed. When you bring it down, it doesn't actually look that big, so this should be perfect. So now to join this back up and continue on. So we, we put our last single crochet here before we started chaining. We're going to put our next stitch here and we're just going to single crochet. So pop your hook in there and work a single crochet. Now, you're probably wondering how you need to have the chain. And in my experience, it all tends to come out in the wash. If it's a little bit twisted, it doesn't tend to matter. So just give it your best shot. We will join this bit up when we come back around in a moment. For now though, work 22 single crochets and that will get you back to the beginning of the round. Finish the round off in the usual way with a slip stitch to the first single crochet, which is easy to find as it's the first bit of color two that you can see. For the next round, we're going to keep slip stitching. One slip stitch in each stitch. Seven slip stitches, or eight if you count the one we finished the last round off with, will get you to the stitch before the little gap. Here's that gap. We're going to close it up now by slip stitching right into the next single crochet. I'm just gonna get the loop out of the way so it doesn't get tangled up. Just slip your hook in there under the V at the top of the single crochet and work a slip stitch. Now that is done, we can start slip stitching our way up this chain. That will make it a little bit thicker and a little bit tougher. So to slip stitch up the chain, all you need to do is insert your hook down into the first chain. You only need to catch one loop of it, but do make sure you're getting the two strands of yarn and work a slip stitch. It can be a little fiddly to get started, but usually you get your rhythm as you start working your way up the chain. I've finished my little loop and it's looking good. I know that sometimes you can get tangled as it has happened to me. It hasn't this time, thankfully. If you are tangled, just take your hook out of the working loop and reposition the loop, bring it to the front. Usually that will do the trick and you'll be able to pop your hook back in and go back to crocheting without any bother. The next thing we're going to do is slip stitch into the top of this single crochet again. So this is the single crochet on the left side of the gap. We slip stitched into it once to close the gap, but we're slip stitching into it a second time.
Now keep on slip stitching. Work your way around the circle and back to the beginning and I'll meet you there to finish off. Finishing off is another thing that there are lots of methods for. So if you have a way you're comfortable using, please go ahead. Meanwhile, I'll show you the invisible join in case it appeals. You'll need to cut your yarn. The invisible join is worked with a needle. Slide out the hook. I'm not fastening off in any way. I'm just pulling out the working loop and thread that tail onto your needle. Invisible joins are worked one stitch to the left of where you would usually work a slip stitch. So if I was finishing with another slip stitch, I would be putting that slip stitch just here. My invisible join will be worked one stitch to the left here. And I'm talking about the slip stitch from the round we just did, not the single crochet from the round below. So take your needle under two loops of that slip stitch like this. Try not to split the yarn. That's what I'm fiddling about with. There we go. And pull it through. Locate the last stitch we made, the slip stitch that we just did, and the center of that slip stitch. Pop your needle in there and take it out inside the stocking. And pull it through. That's created something that looks very like another slip stitch, so it's a nice neat way to finish off. I'll sew this end in now, the same as any other tail, by sewing it back and forth at least three times, which will stop it from unraveling. If you're using this top, do make sure you sew in all of the tails, particularly the one at the toe. Here's the finished stocking. I hope you're pleased with it. Please remember to click the like button, subscribe if you want to see more patterns, and I would love to know what colors you chose for your stocking and if you got it done in time for Christmas. I'm going to keep going now. It's time to have a look at option two, fold down ribbing and a hanging loop. I've attached color two and I'm starting the ribbing by chaining 16. If you want more or less ribbing, you can change the length of this initial chain. It doesn't have to be an even number. Any number will work. Here's my chain of 16. If you are going to alter the length of this chain, just remember that this top folds down like this. So that lets you guesstimate how long you want it to be. To start working down the ribbing, don't count the loop on your hook. Count one, two, and work a single crochet into that second chain. You only need to catch one loop of the chain yarn over and pull through the chain. There are two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. One single crochet in each chain until you're back down to the stocking. That will be 15 single crochets. When you've worked your 15th single crochet, you'll have this nice little length of single crochets and it's time to join it up to the stocking again. Locate the slip stitch join from the round below, just here, with the start of the ribbing growing from it. We're not going to work into this first space. We'll treat it like the chain we started the ribbing with is coming out of it. Instead, slip stitch into the first empty stitch. Then slip stitch for a second time into the stitch next to that one. That's attached now and we're going to head into working up the ribbing by chaining one and turning our work. So we can work back up this ribbing. Looking down at your stitches, don't count the loop that's on your hook, count the V's and count back one V, two, three, and into the fourth, we're going to work a back loop single crochet. Insert your hook down into the stitch, coming out the back and catching only one loop. From there, you yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two. So it's worked like a normal single crochet, but only in that back loop. A normal single crochet goes under two loops like this, but we're going to work another back loop one. Insert down into the stitch and come out the back of the stitch, catching one loop and working a normal single crochet from that point. Work 14 back loop single crochets in total, counting the ones we've already done, and I'll meet you there. When you've worked 
14 back loop single crochets, you'll have one empty space left. And in that last spot, we're going to work a normal single crochet under two loops. Now we're going to chain one, turn our work and head back down the ribbing. We're going to work the same pattern that we worked up the ribbing, but in reverse. So this first spot gets a normal single crochet under both loops. And the next 14 stitches will get back loop single crochets. I find it very helpful to count my stitches when I'm working ribbing as the last spot when you're working down the ribbing does look a little bit funny and sometimes I at least get confused and skip it. So this spot here is where you work the last back loop single crochet of this section of the ribbing. To connect the ribbing back to the stocking, we're going to slip stitch twice again. We worked our last slip stitch just here. So we're going to slip stitch in the first empty stitch to the left for our first slip stitch. And then a second slip stitch in the next stitch along. Now chain one, turn your work and start working your way back up the ribbing, following the same pattern we used last time we worked up. Don't count the loop on the hook, count back one V, two, three, and work a back loop single crochet into the fourth. And we'll work 14 back loop single crochets. When you've worked 14 back loop single crochets, you'll have one stitch left and that one will get a normal single crochet under both loops. So we've worked our way all the way up the ribbing, chain one, turn and head back down. Remember it's the same pattern but in reverse, so we start with a single crochet under both loops and then the next 14 stitches get back loop single crochets. And the 14th one goes into that funny spot there. Now we're going to slip stitch twice to secure it back to the stocking. Locate the spot you slip stitched last time, go to the empty stitch to the left, slip stitch once, slip stitch into the next stitch along, chain one, turn your work and you can head back up the ribbing. So hopefully you're starting to see that it's the same pattern repeating itself. I'm going to leave you to work the rest of the ribbing. I'll get you to pause the video and turn it back on when you have worked your way down the ribbing to find that you can only slip stitch once into an empty stitch that the spot you'd normally slip stitch into the second time is actually the slip stitch that finished the round below. I've nearly finished the ribbing. Normally we slip stitch twice. This spot we normally slip stitch into is free, but this spot, if you have a close look, this is actually the slip stitch join from the round below. And out of the top of it is coming the big long chain that started the ribbing. So in a way that spot is already taken. And that's how you know we're coming to the end of the ribbing. Let me show you how to work this last bit. We're still going to slip stitch twice. Once into the empty stitch, which is nice and easy. And the second time into the top of the slip stitch join. Yes, it already has something in it. We're just going to add one more stitch to it. There we go. Chain one, turn your work and head back up the ribbing one last time in the same way you have with all the rest of the ribbing. And I will meet you at the top to join this up. It's time to join these two bits together. Chain one and turn your work. We're going to slip stitch to join this up. The trickiest thing about it is making sure you have the stitches lined up properly. If you have trouble recognizing your stitches, you might find it easier to count on the chain side from the stitch closest to the stocking 
up to the top to find your 15th chain. So start down here, count up to 15. We're going to slip the hook under two loops of the last single crochet we made and under two loops of the 15th chain and yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop on your hook to slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch all the way along, but while we work through two loops of the first single crochet, for the rest of the single crochets, we're going to go through the back loop only. We'll still go through two loops of the chain. So back loop of the single crochet, two loops of the chain and slip stitch all the way down. I'll meet you at the bottom. And we're done. I'm going to chain one to fasten off, but before I cut this, I wanna have a little look at how the ribbing is going. Now it looks quite long, but it needs to be folded down. There we go. Have a look at that. What do you think? I'm loving it. I love how the multicolored yarn has worked together. There are little sections of the colors, even though I held two strands together randomly. I really love how that's worked out. Okay, enough admiring. I need to add the loop to this before I can call it finished. So you need to grab your color one yarn again, two strands of yarn held together, and we're going to put a slip knot on the hook. And I need to attach this to the inside of the stocking. Make sure that you've got your stocking folded at the actual halfway point and attach the yarn inside the stocking level with that crease so that the loop will be at the side of the stocking where it should be. We're going to slip stitch, so get your hook under two loops as best you can. You don't need to be precise here. I've gone under the V of a stitch and I'm just doing a normal slip stitch. I don't know why I'm making this look so difficult. It is just a normal slip stitch. Now that's attached, make a chain to form the basis of the loop. So for the previous top, the single crochet top, I chained 30. This chain needs to be a little longer as the ribbed top has a bit more height above where I've attached this yarn. So I'm going to chain 35. You can chain any number you like. Just think about where you'll be hanging the stocking and make sure it's long enough. Here is my chain of 35. I need to attach it back into the stocking. To do that, I'm going to slip stitch. This is where I joined it up to start the chain and I'm going to slip stitch just to the left of where that chain starts. And I'm going to slip stitch a second time into the next stitch to the left, just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Now chain one, and we're going to slip stitch up this chain. Insert your hook down into the chain. I'm struggling with slip stitches today. There we go. Slip stitch in each chain until you've reached the other end of the chain, and I'll meet you there. I've finished slip stitching, so it's time to fasten off this loop. I'd like you to slip stitch into the stocking again. The first spot we slip stitched in the stocking is here, where we joined the yarn before we made the chain. The second spot is where we attach the end of the chain into the stocking. Slip stitch into that spot for a second time. Now I'm going to chain one and cut my yarn. Pull out your hook, tighten up that chain one to make a little knot and bring in your needle. I'm not just gonna weave this tail in, I'm going to use this tail to reinforce the loop a bit. If Santa brings heavy presents, I want the loop to be nice and strong. So this isn't an exact thing, I'm just going to try and reinforce this area. So I'm gonna start by taking the tail down into the stocking and then back on itself 
and basically just go back and forth wherever you think the loop might come under strain. I've sped this up a bit, but you can see that I've added some stitches around the areas where the loop is attached to the stocking. I think that should be enough to give you an idea of how to tackle this yourself. I sewed in the other tails too. Please don't forget to sew those in. There's no perfect way to do tails. You just need to thread them on your needle and sew them back and forth at least three times so they'll be secure particularly that one at the toe, which I've mentioned a few times. You can see I worry about that toe one. Kids love sticking their feet into stockings and you don't want their toes poking through. This was an epically long video to make. It's been a marathon getting the stockings and the video up before Christmas and I know I barely made it. This is the finished stocking and it looks adorable. I hope you found the video useful, even if it's a project you're putting aside for next year. Please click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more crochet patterns. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.